And then something else happened. Washington, when he took his Hessian captives and his own men back across the Delaware, uh, he had trouble with the discipline of his army. The Hessians were sober at Trenton, but the American army got drunk. Uh, they got into the taverns, and Washington had great difficulty uh, 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 getting them. The, the reverse crossing was very difficult. And at the same time, there was another group that had failed to make one of those earlier crossings down the river. Finally, they got across on the 27th of December, uh, the day after the battle, uh, the day that the other Americans were coming back across the river. Uh, and these groups from Philadelphia were the Philadelphia Associators. They were a very interesting bunch. They were very radical. The sergeants and privates had their own sergeants and privates committees. Uh, they did not hesitate to tell their officers uh, what they should do. And when they got across to New Jersey, they, they, they had meetings, these enlisted men, and they told their officers they were not going to go back across that river. They were going to stay there. They thought there was an opportunity, and that came back to Washington, to his council of war. He suddenly saw an opportunity, as did the entire council. And so Washington ordered his men back across the river, the 28th, 29th of December, uh, his numbers growing a little bit more. And then in this uh, endless series of perils that happened, as he did that, the next problem that he had to deal with is that these uh, American troops were about to run to the end of their period of enlistments. Uh, they had, many of them, agreed to serve for a year that would expire on December 31st, uh, the, just the day or two days after they had crossed. And uh, Washington uh, worked with Robert Morris, and the result of that uh, was that they were able to find some uh, coin buried in a rose garden by a Quaker merchant in Philadelphia. Robert Morris brought that to Washington. And Washington went to his men, and he appealed to them in the name of the cause to stay beyond their enlistment. And there was not very much enthusiasm. And then he appealed again to the cause and added $10 ready money, hard coin, and his men uh, decided to stay on. Uh, and uh, they occupied uh, Trenton once more as the British came gathering first of all at Princeton and then down the road uh, toward the American troops. The British outnumber the Americans about two to one, more or less, in all of these things. Washington did two things. He prepared a fighting retreat with these men on the road just where we are today. This was called the Maidenhead Road that ran down to Lawrenceville, then called Maidenhead. The British uh, getting to march down, that's about nine miles down to Trenton. As they did, Washington had some of his men stage a fighting retreat, slowing them down, a very painful military operation, and they carried it off with, with much success. And at the same time, Washington had his other part of his army uh, build field fortifications above the, 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 street, uh, the stream called Assenpunk Creek, uh, which is on the south side of Trenton. And they built a layered defense of artillery and infantry lines. And as the Americans fell back, fighting all the while back on Trenton, uh, his army was able to fill those lines. And then the British fought a battle that's been missed from the textbooks. It was the second battle of Trenton. And what they did was to try to cross that creek and drive the Americans out of their positions, thinking that they could do it as they had did it so, done it so often in the fighting around uh, New York. And they failed. And there were heavy losses that some of, this was now Cornwallis who was back in com command in, uh, of, the, of, the, of the attack, uh, that they, 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 that they uh, suffered. And night came on, the Americans in their position, but now British troops streaming in, greatly outnumbering Washington. He was penned against the Delaware River, and that famous council of war posing a question in an open way. And people came in to describe the terrain in that area, there was uh, what was described as uh, a young gentleman of Princeton, maybe an undergraduate, who came in and told the Council of War about the back roads to Princeton. And Washington and his troops planned a long march around the British uh, who were uh, uh, in, in Trenton 
uh, to attack the uh, British base at, at, at Princeton. And then hopefully they would head north to New Brunswick uh, and capture what was there, the British uh, field chest filled with gold. And they hoped that that um, might help them in their recruitment efforts as well. And all that went on in the night. Half of Washington's panicked in the dark and fled down to Burlington. He took the other half up the, to, to Princeton and very near where we are today. They ran into a British uh, regiment uh, along with other reinforcements that were being sent down the Maidenhead Road uh, to, uh, 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 for the, the Cornwallis' troops. And there was another battle of yet another kind. Uh, this was what sa the soldiers call a meeting engagement. It was two armies that just ran into each other, uh, both taken by surprise. And the British fought with great courage and suffered terrific losses. The Americans uh, uh, killed uh, several hundred British troops, captured another 300 or 400. Again, Washington gave orders that they were to be treated with humanity, and it was done. And then they, these men were now so exhausted, they'd been marching for days. Uh, they could, uh, there was no hope that they could uh, march as far as New Brunswick. So they went off in a different direction, slept by the side of the road, and then retreated to Morristown.